morning, good morning, and good morning. How are you all? Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of, yep, y'all know it, Exit Strategies Radio Show. Guys, as y'all heard in the intro, you know who I am. That is me. I'm Corwin J. Millette, broken owner of Exit Realty Low Country Group in beautiful North Charleston. Hey, look, we're going to have a ball today, all right, because we have um, one of our, if you will, past guests that has come through again for us to have a conversation and dialogue about what's going on, excuse me, not only just in the market in general, but specifically, specifically what's going on in this current market and things that you guys may need to need to know. So look, I, I, I need my drum roll. So matter of fact, guys, we got to get the special effects in because I need my drum roll, my, sig- my signal, a symbol and all this other stuff, guys, <laughs> to really make a bunch of noise. I want y'all to clap at home. I want you to stomp your feet. I want y'all to get down with the beat. You know what I mean? You know how y'all did when y'all was in high school with all them cheering and all that stuff. I want y'all to do all of that because we have none other than LaShawn Super Money. Yeah, that's her name. <laughs> Super Money. <laughs> Abraham with us today. LaShawn, how you doing? I am well. I'm so glad to be here. I'm doing very well. Awesome. Awesome. Now, Lashawn, first and foremost, for our guests, the last time that we had Super Money on, guys, Super Money has, matter of fact, hold on, we got to change it because, see, you don't move. You don't change. So, we got to let people know where you're at. So, we got to yes. call you exponential money. You know Ooh, I, mean? I like that. Yeah. yeah. We can't, you can't be super. That's average now. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. You got to be beyond that. But, but if you would tell our, tell our listeners um, who you're with and what you do. Yeah, so LaShawn Abraham, mortgage loan officer. I am now with Deal Mortgage. Um, my office is located still in Somerville. I'm just in downtown Somerville, right off of South Main and Hutch- in Hutchinson Square. I'm still serving all of South Carolina and the Tri-County. So I'm definitely glad to be here. Awesome, awesome. So LaShawn, this look, so for our listeners, guys, we, we got money on, on the phone. All right. You know, we got money. Look here. And when you look here, and I done told y'all, and I got to remind y'all, y'all got to know how to talk to y'all money. Because some of y'all be angry and mad when y'all talk to y'all money because y'all think y'all money ain't right. You know what I mean? You know how some people talk to their money. It's all jacked mm-hmm. up. But but when you got exponential money on the phone, you, you need to talk soft and sweet. So we can't be <laughs> hard and harsh today. We got to be extra sweet to LaShawn because LaShawn is going to tell us some good stuff. So LaShawn, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of buzz going on. So I'm going to start with kind of that big thing, that big buzz that's been going on recently. There's been a lot of talk about um, new loan limits and all those things. So if you don't mind, let's let's kind of delve into that. Tell us what does that look like for the consumer as far as um, loan limit changes? Yeah, so loan limit changes is is great because one, you know, with the market changing and property values skyrocketing, now we have loan programs to match it. In the past, what that meant was um, the conforming loan limits was under a certain threshold so loan can get loans for a certain threshold. So now that they have increased it to over $600,000, that allows you to get what we call conforming, regular, conventional type of financing, still keeping the down payment low and not requiring these huge down payments out of pocket. Awesome. So awesome. essentially you can buy, you know, a $625,000 house and put down only three, three and a half percent, you know, lower, lower amounts versus 10, 20. 25%. Awesome. So so what I'm hearing is you're able to increase your spending power, but not have to increase your or necessarily overly increase your um your quote unquote skin in the game down payment. Yep. So that's huge. Yes. So loan limits have went to to what? From what? So they were before around like five hundred thousand on a conventional loan. Um mm-hmm. and now they're like at six hundred and twenty five thousand. Um, which is which is huge. So one of the things I do want to clarify is a lot of people, as soon as that announcement went out, people assume that the FHFA was the same thing as FHA, which isn't. <laughs> okay. I have people say, hey, FHA increased their loans. I'm like, mm-mm, that wasn't FHA. Um, <laughs> so that's just for conforming loans. Um, conforming are your conventional loans. So that's any loans that's kind of service new, Fannie or Freddie. Um, FHA has not increased it yet, but typically they follow um, shortly after 
conventional does. So that should be coming out sometime in the beginning of next year as well. Some um, increased limits with FHA as well. All right. So in FHA limits currently are, are what? I, um, it varies uh, by the county, but for Charleston area, it's probably around like no more than about 450 or so. Okay. 450 or below is usually around the max you can get on an FHA loan. Mm -hmm. And that's still higher. I mean, because, you know, FHA loan limits and, and, and this is for our listeners, you know, guys, this is a, a byproduct of the type of market where you know, prices are increasing, um, yeah. you know, I, you know, uh, as, you know that increase it may be a um a misnomer because it's, it's escalating it's, it's like it's like yeah. watching people on the escalator it's like up 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 <laughs> <laughs> i agree but, but but with that happening in turn you know people are negatively Im impacted in that situation you bump mm -hmm. up against one of these loan limits now your down payment or commitment if you will financial commitment in the transaction not the promise to pay, but the commitment out of pocket up front, the upfront costs increase dramatically when you bump against or go above one of these loan limits. So to be able to increase the loan limit and but also keep in moderation the down payment requirement, you know, the upfront costs keeping those within reason allows more people to achieve home ownership than what would have happened otherwise. Am I right or am I incorrect? Absolutely. No, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Being able to still be able to buy, quote unquote, uh, you know, the, it, what's affordable in that in our market today and still not have to be required to put down, you know, these huge down payments is definitely, definitely uh, been a little bit of a game changer as well. And see, that that's that's one of the things that, you know, we sometimes, you know, miss. We don't understand. And, I, and, and by we, I'm talking, you know, to our, our consumers that are listening, um, because, but agents miss this as well. Agents don't understand, um, as you kind of stated a little early, I would imagine that you probably have seen some people, agents, um, that have contacted you about FH, um, or FAHA, you know, those limits when it's, mm -hmm. it's FHA. I mean, Fannie Mae, mm -hmm. you know, Freddie Mac limits are different. The conforming, um, conventional side is different than, than FHA. Um, mm -hmm. and it's in, in incredible to me how many, um, you know, people that are quote unquote in the industry don't really understand that and sometimes miss either misinform people because of it. Um, right. so, you know, along, along these, along that same vein, um, you know, you're seeing, matter of fact, this, this is something that that's interesting to me. So let, let's, what are some of the reasons why people may not qualify? I, you know, I, I read a, it's, it's been some years ago. Um, and I've seen something ridiculous, like the average credit score of people that were turned down for finances. And I, I did a show on this, maybe it's been about two, maybe three years ago, um, that the average credit score of people that were turned down on, um, conventional finance or on financing was like 719. Um, and it was, it was interesting to me. And granted, you know, it doesn't say, you know, what the reasons were or are for, you know, mm -hmm. the turn downs, but nonetheless, that credit score, most people, consumers, that you know we talk to kind of think okay well look my credit score is this i'm not gonna have a problem getting finance i'm 700 plus but do you see a lot of that yeah absolutely um more so i've been i've seen really if your credit score is under a i would say right about a 700 or less mm -hmm. trying to go mm -hmm. conventional it's kind of like hit or miss you have to have at least a debt to income ratio under 40 percent you have mm -hmm. to have at least somewhere between two to six months of reserves in the bank mm -hmm. um if you don't have a combination of those things then even if you have a 700 credit score um it's very very difficult or likely that you'll truly get an approval and that's sad because a lot of people think credit score credit score credit score and credit score is important don't get me wrong but it's also the debt to income ratio and the reserves as well when we're talking about conventional. So, you know, that kind of goes to this and I, I've, I've likened this, um, this entire process, the financial process is you guys paint a picture. So you as um, a loan officer, um, mortgage originator, you are the artist. And then, you know, the brush is the person and their financial situation is the paint. And mm -hmm. if they give you garbage paint, then you're going to have a, a hard time painting a good yeah. picture for the underwriter 
for them to make a decision that's favorable. Am I right or am I incorrect? That's absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> so as consumers, we all need to understand that, you know, this entire process is a is a is one, the picture is going to be unique and original because the brush mm -hmm. is original, the paint is original, you know, or, or unique. Let me say it that way. You know, not that, you know, it's the first and there's more of it. It's unique. This is it. Whatever we have in front of us is all that we can work with. That's the individual as well as the um, excuse me, their financial you know, paint out, you know, what mm -hmm. all that looks like. So whatever image that you can put together out of this um, is going to be what the underwriter has to consider. And if that yep. picture is not attractive, if, you know, it doesn't warrant, then we ain't getting a check for it. Am I right? You're absolutely correct. <laughs> I like that. I like how you, I like yeah. how you, the analogies that you use. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. You yeah. have to have, all of those different pieces to, to really fit together. So, so, so the, the real thing, and they, they say black is not a color, but <laughs> the real thing is that we want to see a lot of black. We want to see a lot of, you know, you know, we, that's what we want to want to see, or we need to see a lot of green, whichever one you, whichever one you want. If you ain't, if you don't yeah, want to yeah. put shades on there, then we need to see a lot of green. Um, mm -hmm. Or we need to see a lot of black, meaning that you're in a positive place. You know, they, you know, you know, black Friday, going back to that, you know, that whole thing that, you know, that's when companies got their financials, quote unquote, into the black and out of the red as far as their, you know, their, their numbers being positive versus, you know, being under, you know, what the um, under you know expenses being higher than what the revenues were. So mm -hmm. we want to see more of that. And, and that's one of the things that I know that's probably more and most challenging. Um, so what else along that vein um, is, is important that you think you can that you can add to that for our listeners? Um, I would just say, just make sure that when you want to buy a house, like some people may, you know, once, especially when we get to this time of the year, you're going into the new year. A lot of people's New Year's resolution is they want to be a homeowner, which I think is a phenomenal resolution to have. But in token, if you want to be a homeowner and you decide you make that decision today, you have to also make sure that the things that you did previously is also in line with what you're going to be doing presently. Because when you're qualifying to buy a house, we do look at what you're doing in the present, but we also look at what you did in the past. So the planning and preparation to buy a house kind of starts a few years back um, because we look at your past in addition to the present. That is huge. So look here, we, we have come up where we need to be um, on for today in, in our first first break here. But, you know, when we come back, you know, our listeners, we want you to make sure that you are close by um, with a pen because we want to drop a few items of note, things that you probably should not be doing if you mm -hmm. plan on making home ownership um, a reality for you, for your family, so forth and so on. So, guys, if you would, as always, stay put in the flapjack, hold tight, and we'll be right back. Congratulations to Exit Realty Low Country Group, Realtor of the Week, none other than Robin Collins. You can reach Robin at 843-557-5003 or text Red Robin Home. That is R-E-D-R-O-B-Y-N-H-O-M-E-S to 85377. Again, that is Red Robin Home, R-E-D-R-O-B-Y-N-H-O. MES to 85377. Y'all give Robin a holler now. And guys, we are back. Second segment, Exit Strategies Radio Show. Yep, that's me, Corwin J. Blatt, broker and owner of Exit Realty Low Country Group in beautiful North Charleston, South Carolina. Yep, yep. I ain't going to sing it today, look at because I got exponential <laughs> money um, here on the line with us this morning. For those of you who are watching us on YouTube, um, y'all, y'all wave and say hi to LaShawn this morning, who was with us to say, okay, hey, look, we're going to tell you how to get this money exponentially. That's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. See, they say 20, they say 2020 was about clear vision, but all we saw was a bunch of junk. Um, 21 was supposed to be, excuse me, us coming out and guys look here, we still questionable about where we're going. But 22, we got to put some direction on this thing and some, some direction, some elevation and move on forward um, exp expediently 
but we got to do that exponentially. So look here, we got exponential money on the phone this morning with us. Um, LaShawn, thank you so much for joining us. If you don't mind, tell our listeners where they can get in contact with you at. Yeah, thanks, Corbin, for having me again. Again, LaShawn Abraham, phone number is 843-303-8652. That number never changes. I am now with Guild Mortgage, um, located in the beautiful downtown Somerville um, on Little Main, South Main, in Hutchinson Square. Awesome, awesome. And LaShawn, you do loans everywhere, right? I do. See, all of, so all of the state of South Carolina. So yes. And look here, so look here, y'all need some money. Um, y'all need to give LaShawn a call now. Look here, and I and I mean that now. So look here. So before the break, we um you you touched on something, and I heard this. I want to say recently, the last couple of mornings, maybe on the morning show, and it kind of resonated when I was listening to the speaker, you know, talk. And you know, we always talk about these resolutions. We make these resolutions mm -hmm. every year. But what happens is there is no plan of action that goes along with it. A resolution mm -hmm. is just a, to be blunt about it, it's a wish hope. Um, supposedly, mm -hmm. you know, the way we approach mm -hmm. it is, okay, well, hey, we resolve this, and this is what we decided we're going to do. But we decide upon a thing, but we don't act upon a thing. We don't put any action with it. It is not a plan. So I'm going to challenge all of our listeners, you know, to make sure that you have a plan that goes with that decision. Wanting to lose weight, and look here, I'm going to talk about weight, but I ain't trying, I ain't with you. I don't mean no harm. I mean, I'm going to exercise when I push back, when I pull up, you know, what have you, when I lift, you know, turn or what have you. But, you know, <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> but, you know, go, you know, along that same vein, guys, we have got to stop doing this thing over and over. I, I've said this for a number of years. Usually every January, February or March, I talk to the same people that I've talked to every January, February or March. For years and years and years because they call and hey i'm about a house this year and okay fine let's do it let's go and let's start doing this and will you do what i told you last year no i didn't okay well look this is what we got to do and let's go get to work and then you lose contact with them somewhere around may or june mm -hmm. or july but they off on vacation doing whatever else and then you don't catch them again next year they call you back and they want to try to do it all over again and it's the same cycle so LaShawn, I, I, I posed this question to you earlier. And, and for our listeners, again, guys, this is where you need to have some understanding because, you know, we we, got, we need to, to, you guys need to understand what it is that you should not be doing. Mm -hmm. So you stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, no, because we keep telling you what you should be doing, but y'all keep going doing other stuff. So we need to tell you what you should not be doing so mm -hmm. that you can make home ownership your reality versus the dream the dream the dream i'm not saying it needs to die i'm gonna tell you it needs to be fulfilled it needs to be fulfilled so LaShawn, give me give me give, give me give me them give me them don'ts okay so the first one just because i see this also it's also many times currently um please if, if if you can don't don't buy the car before you buy the house don't don't do that. Just just don't. Um, because a car payment we know nowadays can range three to six hundred dollars, depends on what type of car you get. And the and we were talking about the rise of these, you know, um, prices of these houses. So a, a three to six hundred dollar payment will kill your debt to income ratio, depending on how much money you make. So if you can buy the house first, buy the house first. Don't put the car. So I'm, I'm gonna share a quick story with you along along that along that line. Two, really. So one, I'm gonna back into the, the one that's most relevant, probably. But I had a situation. I had a guy in my office one time that wanted to buy a house, and he had moved here. You know, a lot of people, you know, buy campers and all that kind of stuff. You see a lot of people that move from company to company. They become mm -hmm. more transient. They buy a camper or what have you. And the guy was in my office, and at some point in time, we had, you know ran, you know, had credit pulled or what have you. And there was a a thousand dollar and change truck payment. And I'm like, what are you driving? I immediately got up and went to look out the window because I'm trying to figure <laughs> out what you're driving that had a thousand dollar a month payment. And granted, we're talking maybe three, two, three or so about maybe three years, two, three years ago, um, probably three years ago with this conversation, but you're driving a uh, an F three fifty, um, but it was a new one with a thousand dollar change a month payment on it. 
So back up and I'm going to give you the situation, what you're talking about. I remember some years ago, I had a couple in my office as a, a, a someone that I talked to it counseled and kind of coached about home ownership. Well, they disappeared on me um, for a, a while. They come back to me um, and because they're already in a contract having a new house built. And I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? You didn't use me. You need to be yeah. talking to whoever you use. <laughs> well, the, the house was was ready and they had just gotten denied on financing. Mm. And I'm like, well, help me out. What happened? Well, her car quit. Had car issues, what have you. Car quit. She went out and bought a new car. Instead of getting it fixed or the cash and arrive for a couple of weeks, house was like maybe a week or two away from, from closing. She went out and bought a brand new house. At the time when she met with me, uh, excuse me, a new car. By the time she met with me, that she was probably about two weeks past. The builder was threatening to kick her out of the contract, all this stuff. I'm like, well, nobody told you this. You didn't use me because you would have gotten that from me. So nobody <laughs> told you this? No. Okay. So I'm like, well, how much is the car payment? So the car payment was probably about, about six, seven hundred dollars. I'm like, what did you buy? <laughs> Because I'm trying to figure, what did you buy? So mm -hmm. anyway, fast forward, I'm like, well, can you take the car back? No. Can the car get missing? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so what you going to do? So long story short, I'm like, look, and before I know this, see, you know, cause my filter got stuck. I said, well, look, you about to sleep in that car. So... Our listeners, guys, I say this jokingly, but really, really, really seriously. LaShawn yeah. is on the market money with this one. So don't buy that new car. LaShawn, what's the next one that you see and mm -hmm. people should have and don't do? Get don't. Your ride. <laughs> Get your ride to work. Don't. Just don't. don't. Call your I mean, I know a lot of people. Take your work. <laughs> yes. So Thank you. Don't you. Buy that car. Go ahead. I'm Thank sorry. you. The second one is, I mean, I know with COVID, you know, a lot of people have discovered a lot of talent, but don't just jump and become self-employed. Please oh. don't. Please, please don't, don't do no that. Place. Don't sell no place, LaShawn. I mean, if you have a W-2 job, I mean, do it after you buy the house, but don't become self-employed before you buy the house. Oh, it's not going to work. Don't sell no bundles. <laughs> no, 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 please. Please don't do that. Don't do that. I'm sorry. No. Go ahead. What's the next one? Don't come. Don't become self-employed. Don't, don't become self -employed. Out the trunk. <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. Definitely, don't put cash in your bank account. Um, cash is a you know we have to be able to trace any type of assets being used for a loan. Cash we can't trace it. We can't source it. We can't truly determine it. Now there's some wiggle room around there. Um, we could do something where the money is seasoned if it's in your account for a couple of months before you apply. You can't put it in the same time you're applying. But mm -hmm. but um, try to avoid any type of cash in your account. Would be my next. Um, don't don't do that. Don't put don't don't put no strange don't put no strange money. <laughs> 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 Strange money. Oh, that's hilarious. That's good stuff right there. No. What else you got? What else you got? I, know um, you I would say don't, money. you know, don't miss payments on things. Don't let things go overdue. Um, continue to make all payments on time, whether you are, um, you know, with the student loans, you know, student loans is always a big thing. A lot of people's student loans have been in um, deferment or forbearance forever <laughs> since COVID mm -hmm. right now. But mm -hmm. once those payment comes due, please make the payments. Don't, don't let them laps or anything like that okay. you um, see a lot of issues with co-signing oh yes yes i, I truly had a situation <clears throat> that a customer told me that i guess people don't understand the ramifications of co-signing they think okay. that if they co-sign because they're not the primary borrower on the loan that they sh it shouldn't affect them when they want to buy and that's mm -hmm. not true when you co-sign you're telling you're telling that person that you're going to you know be their backup in the event that the person doesn't pay. So you're equally responsible for that debt. And that debt does count towards towards that individual as well, unless you can prove that that other person is paying it. And that's a hard thing to prove sometimes because I've seen it in the past as well, where let's say a mom and a mom and a, and a kid or something is paying for something. Oh, I bought this a co sign for a car from a kid. My kid is going to give me the money every month to pay it which is fine. However, we have to be able to document that transaction. So if the kid is given 
the mom the money because it's paying for that person's car, we have to be able to follow that money. You have to make sure that the money is coming out of the account, that we can see the trail of it um, and not just, you know, keeping the cash for yourself or something like that. And, that, and it needs to be a separate um, account that that person's name is not on. I, I've seen right. that. Um, mm-hmm. unfortunately as well, um, you know, well, they give me the money and I pay it now that doesn't work or no, they pay it out it of their account, but I'm a joint person yep. on their account that, that doesn't, that doesn't re- rectify the situation is that actually no. makes it worse because it makes it look like yeah. you're paying. Payment. They look like, they look like you're paying it. No point is you got to yeah. prove that you're not paying it and it's coming out of your account. So you're absolutely right. Exactly. Sure. So you, you gave me, you got another one? Um. Because you gave me five. I asked for five. You gave me five. So you told told them people, don't buy the car. You told them people, don't miss no payments. You told them people, um, hold on. It was, don't co-sign for nobody. No. Um, Don't become uh, self-employed. Don't don't become, don't sell no plates. (laughs) I'm sorry. <laughs> that's good. That's good stuff. Don't sell no plates. Everybody sell the plate out of the car right now, out the back of the truck. But you gave some good points right there. So for our listeners, guys, we have fun with this stuff, but we're having fun and we know this stuff. Unfortunately, somebody else is expanding. Not not saying we're laughing okay. at anybody, but we're we we know these things because we've had that experience. We've had that deal fall apart because somebody co-signed the vehicle and didn't tell nobody, went out and bought a car, didn't tell anybody. You know, I used to have a um, my car guy, um, my car guy. Hopefully, he'll be in the real estate um, side real soon. But he used to laugh and joke with me. Say, "Look, he always would tell people to come in that's in the process of buying. The only people he like to see, he like to see the people that are buying <laughs> a house come in to you know to buy a car because he know their credit is going to be good if they're in the process of buying a house." And he said, "Well, hey, don't you want to pull up? Don't don't you want to put a brand new car in your garage, right?" <laughs> and I told him, I said, look, and I, and I meant this when I said it to him. I said, look, man, I said, if you ever do one of my people like that and we don't and we can't close in their house, I said, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to beat you down. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you bet. I said, you better ask them who they realtor is. If it's me, you better let them go and tell them they can come back and get the car after closing. Hey. Yeah. So. That is priceless. Good stuff. So, LaShawn, look, thank you so much for, for you know, first and foremost, for being a part of the Exit Strategies Radio Show family. I really appreciate you. We always have a great oh, time on air. If you don't mind, tell our listeners one more time where they can get you at. Yeah, always can be reached by phone, text 843-303-8652. My office is located in downtown Somerville, um, and I can and I service the entire South Carolina. So. I'm here and available. Awesome. So for our listeners, guys, you need exponential money. You need to call, give LaShawn Abraham a call. Exponential. She ain't super money no more. She beyond super. <laughs> He's exponential. That's what we do around here. I like here. that. So look, as I always tell you guys, and guys, you'll hear as we close, we love you and we appreciate you for tuning in. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. Look for this. If you missed today's airing on air, then listen for the podcast and check it out as well, guys. Great information. We had a great time. LaShawn, again, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And we love you all. And y'all make today a fabulous one. And we'll talk to you soon.